When we hold on to grievance and pain from the past, we keep ourselves from being able to really move into our fullest expression of self. We need to practice forgiveness from the soul recovery perspective, dissipating the energy and releasing the past for good. If you're interested in this profound transformation, I invite you to join me in Colorado the weekend of June 8th and 9th to have an incredible experience with others on this same soul recovery journey. Two full days of immersion in the soul recovery process where you will indeed leave transformed. You will be able to truly let go of these old pains and step into a new way of being. Check out the show notes for a coupon code and how to register. My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Outer positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media and join the private Facebook group to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support this podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Welcome to Recover Your Soul. I'm Reverend Rachel Harrison, and I am so glad that you are here with me today. If you are new to soul recovery, welcome to the community. And if you are on your soul recovery journey, welcome back. For today's episode, I wanted to talk again about forgiveness. I do have at least one episode in the regular episodes, and I think I have a couple episodes in the bonus content, but I wanted to talk about it from a different perspective today. It's such a fundamental piece of our being happy, our spiritual path to a happy and healthy life, that I wanted to just revisit it and talk about it a little bit more. The words that came to me as my topic is, forgive and you will live differently. Forgive and you will live differently. Part of soul recovery is turning the attention to ourself, letting go of what we think that we had control of, which is nothing outside of ourselves, letting go of blame, letting go of shame, releasing our grievances, releasing our resentments, And starting to come from a place of acceptance and love. And to me, that's forgiveness. I think of a story that I heard somewhere in the rooms about how you poison yourself thinking that it's going to kill the other person that you're angry at. And that's, to me, what I feel like anger and resentment and grievance is about, is that we continue to take the poison thinking that it will punish the other person, but really it's just punishing us. It's making us miserable. And the other visual that came to me when I was thinking about this and what to say was I saw a big spider web. I saw a spider web that in the middle had us and splintering out in all areas of the spider web or all the areas of our life that we hold on that's so sticky. I always use the word sticky. These things around us, our our needs, our wants, our controls, our wishes, how things aren't working out, other people's situations, the life situations, everything that is out in the world going on and that that spider web is catching all of those things in our life and it's keeping us stuck. It's not like we're catching them because it's going to feed us. It's more like we're stuck in the middle 
And unless we can learn how to forgive, unless we can learn how to truly let go of that need for stuff to be different, for us to be okay, for us to hold on to old hurts, hold on to the past, hold on to our anger, when we let go of all that, we actually are released from the spider web. We are free. Since I started soul recovery in earnest almost four and a half years ago, coming into this and really taking this deep dive this time, a spiritual dive, not just releasing myself of alcohol, which was my addiction of choice, and control, which I didn't even realize was my addiction, but it turned out that it was the cause of my suffering, this need to want things to be different, to think that I'm helping out, to think that I'm doing things to benefit other people, that I think I know a better way, all these things that were really bringing me a lot more misery. And then I used alcohol to try to cover up how uncomfortable I felt. Before I really took this dive, and if you had talked to me about forgiveness, I think I would have thought the old forgiveness that I think of from being a child, where something happens, somebody's feelings get hurt, and the adults just say, okay, just say you're sorry, and then the other person forgives, and then we can just move on and not have to worry about it. We can sweep it under the rug, push down your emotional feelings, and just go forward. To me, that was what I think I brought with me, this idea of forgiveness. Now, I'm pretty lucky and I understand that I come from a pretty unique upbringing. If you've listened to any of my episodes, that I was raised Buddhist with my mom. My mom and dad separated gently, kindly, lovingly from each other when I was around eight years old. I lived with my mom exclusively, visiting my dad occasionally on weekends. And she raised me. And so there was not a lot of conflict on that end. And so I have this interesting part of me that actually didn't have a lot of conflict growing up. And so conflict has been really hard (laughs) as an adult moving out into the world, to be honest. And that somewhere in it, it made it difficult for me to have relationships where there was hurt feelings. And so I think that I ended up being one of those people that thought that I was kind of letting things go. But the truth is, inside, I was internalizing it and had a lot of self-esteem issues, a lot of doubt, a lot of shoving things down, a lot of trying to be what everybody else wanted me to be so that I would be accepted. Because my fear was that if I was exposed and not liked, I would, I don't know, burst into flames, that the I'd be sucked into a hole and to never be seen again. I don't know what I thought would happen, but I was terrified of being rejected all the way until pretty recently that I dug up that belief system in myself and saw that that is the foundation of everything that I do, my fear of rejection. And that then now it's not like it's completely gone, but I can see it. So a big piece of my healing came from first forgiving myself for allowing myself to have grace and tenderness over the choices that I made, how I felt about things, seeing that younger side of me and the choices that she made, and really just giving her compassion. That self-compassion is so important, that tenderness to self that we would give to a friend, the things that we would say kindly to a friend, but we're saying it and giving it to ourselves instead. When I first started looking at compassion, and then I found Kristen Neff, who has the Compassion Project website, and looking at her books, I loved the way that she talked about compassion, self-compassion, and this part of us that has tender compassion and fierce compassion that sometimes we need to use our self-compassion to be soft to ourselves, to say sweet things to ourselves, to tell me as a little girl, it's okay, it's okay that you were afraid of being rejected. I mean, why wouldn't you? You were just doing what made sense at the time in the situation that you were in. It's okay, it's okay, you, you did just fine. And then there's fierce compassion where we learn to stand up for ourselves. We learn to use our voice in healthy and good ways of being able to say, you know what, 
I'm not going to be afraid of being rejected anymore. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to stand out in the world in my strength and I'm going to stop trying to be small. That's my fierce compassion. And in that forgiveness to myself, part of that, a huge piece of that is letting go of the need to try to overanalyze, over figure it out, go back, repeat, 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 just to have tenderness and grace, just to move towards the higher power connection that is so important to me, to know that I had this journey, this life journey, exactly like I did because it is my journey. It is who I am. It has brought me to where I am today. That without difficulty, in general, we don't learn and grow. So whatever all of that was, was part of my experience, part of my school of learning that is life. Then the next part of forgiveness that's interesting is looking at those places where we have been hurt, where we're drinking the poison by not having relationships, by not speaking our mind, by not telling somebody how we feel, by allowing people to walk all over us, by being overly codependent or enabling or people pleasing in situations because we're afraid that we won't be liked or loved or accepted. Places where we have had trauma and we're not doing anything about it. We're not letting it out. We're not working through it. We're just shoving it down. People who we've been in relationship with who have hurt us. And we're holding on to that emotion. We're holding on to those feelings that get stuck in our body. And then we are doing that outside forgiveness, the like, I forgive you, but we're not actually feeling the relief from it. So we're continuing to take the poison for ourselves and expecting it to affect another person or to change the situation or to make it different. So the forgiveness that I want to talk about in soul recovery comes from a deeper connection with your higher power. My belief, and again, as always, take what works for you and leave the rest. I am not trying to tell you what to think or feel or believe on a spiritual level. This is my experience. These are my beliefs. This is my studies and what feels right to me. So If it feels right to you, awesome. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Do what feels right to you. Okay. So for me, my connection with higher power and my belief is in a loving presence, in a completely accepting and whole presence. And it is non judgmental, it is not about being right or wrong. That in my belief, Actually, spirit doesn't see right or wrong. It only sees purity. That all these choices we make from the outside, all these ways that we project, all these feelings that we have, all these interactions that we have with people come from our human ego self. And they are not actually of our soul. They are from our outside human experience. And to me, that's free will. That's the part of us that can choose to do whatever. And my belief is that underneath all of that is this connection to something more amazing, something more loving, something more wonderful. It's, it's hard to even describe. It's an awe. It's a magnificence. It's a tender, loving, all accepting, completely unconditional acceptance. And that that part of us, that connection with that higher power doesn't see the pain. It doesn't want you to be hurting. It doesn't want you to be punished. And it actually doesn't want you to punish other people with guilt and with blame and shame and suffering. That all of those are choices that we make If we decide we're going to hold on to this external part of us, this human part of us that wants to reason out, wants to understand, wants to project, brings with us all these past experiences and lays on top of everything that we do, all of this emotional stuff 
that we've experienced up until now and revisits it and revisits it and revisits it. That's pretty out there for a lot of people. And I totally get that. And I'm 52 years old and it's taken me all this time to even begin to wrap my head around these concepts. So again, if that doesn't resonate for you, it's okay. (laughs) What I, the simple part is our internal self, our soul self, our heart self is love. And so when I think of forgiveness for other people, I think of Jesus on the cross. I think of him saying, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's funny to, for me to be quoting Bible since I didn't grow up Christian or with a lot of those reference, but I think of that line quite a lot because in that moment when he is being crucified, that his response is, be tender to these people. They're just humans. They're afraid. They're not coming from a place of love. And if we look in our own life and we look at most of the places where there's been hurt or suffering or darkness or so much of what happens to us that doesn't feel good, and we let go of our part where we want it to be a certain way, and you start to have compassion for another person, generally what we see is another person who's struggling, who's hurting, who feels lonely, who feels lost. And then the two of us are sitting in that situation, each wanting the other person to move over to us, to understand what we need, to understand what is going on for us and to be there for us. And the other person's feeling the same way. And that's where a lot of discord happens. We look at our parents and we wish that our parents had been different and they were just young people having a hard time doing the best that they could, trying as hard as they could to do what they could. And oftentimes it wasn't enough. I know for me that when I think about my kids, there's a lot of things I'm sure that they're going to sit and talk to a therapist about. And I was just doing the best that I could at the time. And then there's situations where really dark, bad things happen. And I don't understand why. I don't have an answer to say why people do harmful things to other people, why there's sexual abuse why there's physical violence, why there's situations where people do really deeply unkind things to people. But I can tell you that if I'm coming from my Rev Rachel self, from my metaphysical minister spiritual self, I don't believe that that is their loving heart soul self. I believe that that is their damaged, hurt, coming from fear, coming from anger, not having the tools or having the the wherewithal to know how to be a kind, compassionate human being. So again, we come back to the forgiveness. How do you forgive for things like that that have happened to you? Or even just hurt feelings or grievances or a spouse that says something that wasn't kind or isn't being present for you in the way that you need? It's a really good question. But it comes back to that spider web. It comes back to us being stuck in the middle of that spider web that we can't get out. It comes back to us taking the poison, drinking the poison, and who's being hurt by the poison? We're being hurt by the poison. For me, the idea of forgiveness isn't about accepting what somebody does and saying, I'm sorry, you're forgiven. It's bigger than that. It's actually just allowing what is, what was, to not process it to death, to not try to figure it out, and to turn the attention to yourself, to allow yourself to have your feelings around it. And so much of what happens to us in the past We have a feeling that's attached to it, and then we don't want to feel it because we're afraid of it. So we push that feeling down. And then that feeling gets pushed down with other feelings like that feeling. And then when somebody says or does something that touches on that feeling, it lights up all those other feelings that have been shoved down in there. 
and I call them black beetles. And it makes that black beetle in there just vibrate and it's dark. So if we can start to have that tenderness and that allowing and connection to the higher power, knowing that we are supported, we are safe, we are loved, finding a place where you are safe, where you can feel comfortable. I do this with people that come to me for soul recovery. What we're doing is we're gently, tenderly allowing those feelings to come up, move through our body, release, not trying to figure it out so much about why somebody did something, how they're, what were they thinking? Who knows what they were thinking? We don't have any control of them. So what we're coming to is we're turning the attention to ourself. We are allowing ourself to grieve, to be angry, to be sad, to be happy, to be scared, and giving ourselves compassion for having to have had that experience and allowing our full, true selves now to hold space for us to allow that to move out and then getting it out of our body by talking about it, by journaling about it, by releasing it. And we're releasing it without blame for the other person, without blame for ourselves, Real deep compassion, real deep introspection of seeing the truth of who we are as human beings and the choices that we made and allowing ourselves grace and tenderness for how this may have affected us in the future and in the lives that we have now, how this could have been something that has kept us from letting people in, has had us choose the people that we choose. I mean, there's so many ways that things in the past reflect to us and allowing it to work its way out. I do a hand shaking thing where I shake my hands really hard to like let all of that out my fingertips. Some people run, some people go to the gym, some people do dance, some people jump up and down, whatever it is to like get it out of your body. What we're doing is we're not, we're not holding on to the memory any longer. We're just having compassion. We're allowing it to be. We're seeing that these choices that are made in life, these experiences that we have do not define us. They do not have to stay with us and be something that we bring with us carry along with us, lay out on the table every time we're having an experience and shuffle these cards and play these cards. We're getting out of the spider web. We're releasing slowly each of these aspects of our lives, of these things that we've held on to so tightly because we can't forgive. When we can do this, when we can start to release those tight bonds, let those black beetles out, stop replaying the past. We can be more present in this moment right now. One of the things that I think about in my relationship, because I know people appreciate me sharing what's going on in my world, because that's all I can share with you is how I've experienced it. I come back to my relationship with Rich and that there were dark times. And if you've listened to the podcast before, you you know some of those experiences. But I was so angry at him for how he interacted with our son, for not being present for me, for being an alcoholic, for all the things that I wanted to be different. And what I want you to know is that I don't feel that anger anymore. I actually have this real deep compassion for these two young people that were trying to raise kids and doing the best that they could. And if I go back and I try to understand him and why he did the things that he did, I'm only perpetuating my grievance. I'm only perpetuating my anger and I'm only creating guilt that he's guilty of something. 
So when I do this practice of tenderness and compassion for the two of us in this situation, this forgiveness allowance, it releases all of that. And what I just see is two tender hearts doing the best that they could and both really hurting on each of their sides. And then I don't go back and revisit it. Not unless there's a little emotional hook that needs to be unhooked that I need to take a look at. And I'm always looking at that from my perspective. I don't understand what anybody else is thinking. I can't possibly know what's going on in somebody else's mind. But what I can know is that I get to choose whether I'm going to take the poison or whether I'm going to allow myself to choose connection with my higher power as my number one priority and let go of all of these angers, all of these resentments, all these grievances, all this guilt, all this shame, all this blame that I'm trying to inflict on the world where I can't do anything about any of that. I can't change how somebody spoke to me. I can't change what somebody thinks of me. I can't make somebody see me differently. But what I can do is I can work on me and I can release and let go of and have tenderness and compassion, gentle tenderness and compassion, fierce tenderness and compassion in the situations in my life so that I am clean and clear and free of the poison and out of the spider web. Sometimes it does mean saying you're sorry. And for me, I try to do a little bit more than that. I try to have some level of awareness of maybe how I've affected somebody. And sometimes it's not appropriate to talk about it to them. Sometimes it's not about laying yourself out in a situation where you're going to be misunderstood or attacked. We're doing this process. We're in soul recovery. It doesn't mean everybody around us is in soul recovery. But if I have that awareness within myself that I'm being judgmental or that I'm trying to control something or I don't agree with the way that somebody's doing something or my feelings got hurt and I can do that work within myself, even if it's not safe or appropriate to have that conversation with the next person, I'm healing me. I'm healing me. I'm having forgiveness, true, true, deep, allowing, letting it go, letting it go forgiveness for myself and for that person, even if they really hurt me, even if they really hurt me, because I'm taking my power back. I'm not giving them the power to decide how I think and feel about myself. I'm letting them just be the humans that they are, the imperfection of humanity and remembering the tenderness, the wholeness of our soul selves and seeing that whole true self of that person and not the human part of them that can be hurting and hurtful. Living a life where you let people off the hook spiritually, emotionally, doesn't mean that they're off the hook in their own world and how it affects their own world from their own behaviors. But we don't need to hold on to or punish them or be responsible for those behaviors for them. Just like we are only responsible for our own behaviors. We need to turn the attention to ourselves, work on us, find our own best self, work on being that best self, unhook those places where there's still pain and suffering, be present right now, connect to your higher power, trust and know that you are being guided and led and supported and loved, and keep your power where it belongs, in you, in you. This is the beauty of a life of forgiveness. If you want to work on this kind of stuff, If you don't understand what I'm saying, this was kind of all over the place, come on over for a soul recovery session. You can join me on Zoom for one session or however many that you need. I'm here to support you in any way. And I also just want to thank each and every one of you for being in this community, 
being in the Facebook group, signing up for the newsletter. The community is growing and we are sharing this healing. I'm watching it happen. I'm experiencing it from you. And so we just want to continue to share the soul recovery message with even more people. So thank you so much for all you do to help that happen and know that I am here to support you in any way. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my path to soul recovery? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's how. Here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with your higher power, whatever that is for you, and to discover and then step forward into a happy and healthy life. You can also become part of our soul recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's by Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website to get your Zoom link. Recover your souls on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, lots of ways to connect. And there's even a private Facebook group that will allow for more communication and conversation about soul recovery. There is also an extra bonus episode every Friday if you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member. I'd also love all of the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time to give me five stars, a quick review, and to share the podcast with your friends and family, we're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you for going to the website and pushing the donate button, whatever donation feels right to you. This means so much to me because I have this enormous mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, your being part of this community is helping that to happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. The Recover Your Soul podcast and its content is for educational purposes only and is not allied or representative of any organizations or religions. It's based on the opinions and experience of Reverend Rachel Harrison. Recover Your Soul claims no responsibility to any persons or entity for any liability, loss, damage, or cause alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of its use. Applications or interpretations of the information represented herein. Take what you need and leave the rest.